<laughs> Good morning. <laughs> and welcome to the Unitarian Church of Edmonton and to this after summer homecoming service. My name is Lynn Turvey. My pronouns are she, her, and I am pleased to be your service leader this morning. I'm joined by our minister, Reverend Rosemary Morrison. Thank you so much to our amazing tech team and Zoom support people. Um, without their help, there would be no hybrid services, really. Um, I think Andrew's gonna make an announcement later to talk about what the kinds of team support that we need. As Unitarian Universalists, we are bound together not by a common set of beliefs, but by our promise to support one another in our individual searches for truth and meaning, guided by our principles and drawing from many sources. We begin our gathering acknowledging that we are located on Treaty 6 territory. We respect the histories, languages, and cultures of First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and all First Peoples of Canada, whose presence continues to enrich our vibrant community. We ask that you quiet any devices you've brought so that we can all enjoy this homecoming time together. I think we have some announcements this morning, about four of them, I believe. Uh, Jennifer has one. You come forward, Jennifer. Good morning, everyone. A few of you may have a subtle hint as to why I'm here. Um, I'm inviting each of you to be part of the friendly face of our church by doing something that's really nice and fun, like smiling at people as they come in, that's greeting, or ushering, helping take the collection. And it just really makes everything seem much friendlier. It makes you feel good as well. And I also have some stickers here uh, to write the dates that you're helping. That I can put in a very subtle part of your anatomy, so you absolutely don't, don't forget. Oh dear, oh dear. So um, if um, you could be thinking of when you're free, that would really help me. And I have the dates for the choir singing. So if you're in the choir, I know when you can help. Thanks so much. <laughs> and looking forward to a big crowd of people anxious to sign up. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Jennifer. Uh, Louise? Hello, um, my name is Louise Cherich, and I just want to talk to you very briefly about soul matters. At the end of the service, I'm going to be at the table at the back where we can look at who wants to sign up for this extraordinary experience. As you know, we have themes each month with worship, with singing and so forth. And Soul Matters is an integral part of that. And we take these themes, the upcoming theme for October when we will kick this off, is heritage and we explore that concept what it means to us to the world to our community i can talk more about this very exciting prospect if you pop in at the back and uh, say hello and i have many pens for signing up so after you sign up with jennifer please come and <laughs> sign up with me yes <laughs> Thanks, Louise. Andrew, you have something? Well, I got something. Hi there, my name is Andrew Mills, and a couple of announcements today. The first announcement is we have new furniture coming. Thank you very much to Gordon and uh, Karen for uh, 
digging through and figuring out what furniture we need and actually finally buying it tomorrow or yesterday. So uh, chairs will be here this week and couches will be here in a couple of weeks when they, when they get here. So beautiful pieces like this need to go. So this lovely table handcrafted by me 30 years ago needs a home. So if anybody would like it, please just take it home. We would love it to go to a nice, nice home. So that was announcement number one. So very happy to see things like that going on. Announcement number two has to do with our tech team. And we would really appreciate anybody who would like to assist us on the tech team. Uh, we have a producer who is someone who is comfortable with computers. We have uh, camera people who control our little camera board. And we have people that control our sound. Now, we're always looking for new people to help us out. Those are the three tech positions. That's here in the church. Online, we have two other, um, three other positions. We have people that help us make our slides each week like this. We have people who are act as greeters online. And so there's right now, there's a greeter online. Thank you, greeter online. And there's also a person recording the service online. Thank you, recorder, who is online today. So I will, I will address myself to the camera and say, hey, thanks, thanks online people. We really appreciate you. So if you'd like to participate in any of those areas, uh, training is provided. Uh, it's a great opportunity. If you are not able to come to church each week and you'd like to help out as greeter or recorder, that would be just terrific. It does all require a bit of computer skill. So uh, if you have a bit of uh, computer skills, we'd really love to hear from you. Otherwise, I'll help you move this to your car when you go. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. And Rosemary, you have an announcement? Good morning. Good morning. My name is the Reverend Rosemary Morrison, and it is my pleasure and honor to serve this congregation. I didn't bring my notes. Let's see if I can remember all the things. First of all, I can attest to the quality of the, um, thank you, coffee table. I borrowed it and used it for a while when I first moved here, and my furniture was delayed several months. So it's a good, sturdy coffee table. So take it home. Uh, Number one, you'll see that there are Buddha boards around. So the idea of this is it's just there for you to play with, basically. Any time during the service, if you'd like to go and draw something on the Buddha board, go ahead. You take the um, paintbrush, dip it in the water, and then, thank you, Andrew, please, yes. Um, you dip it in the paintbrush and then do calligraphy or anything that you would like to do. It disappears in three or four minutes and the next person can, can make a drawing on that. You're free and welcome to do that at any time during the service as the spirit moves you, as it were. Two other announcements from me. I'm hosting UU on Tap again at the end of each month this year. So that's the last Monday of the month. This month it will be at Brewster's in Unity Square. You can arrive any time after 5.30. The happy hour prices end at 6. So we're going to meet at 5.30 this year. <laughs> just so we can get our orders in. So... Uh, the second thing that I'm, I'm trying something new this year, my, one of my main focuses for our congregation this year is establishing and creating and growing ourselves as um, visiting and covenanting and a community that likes to hang out together and eat together and be together. And so to do that, we need what I call eyeball time. So um, to facilitate that, uh, once a month I will be hosting, uh, Fridays are for food and fun. Here, uh, it'll be in the, in the building, in the Keeler Hall, in the lobby, so bring games if you want. If anybody has settlers, please bring them. I'd love the game of Settlers of Catan. I'm going to provide a big pot of soup. You can bring whatever you like to go with that or nothing. Lots of people will bring things. Basically, it's any time after 5 o'clock. You can come, go and get the kids, grandkids, come here, have dinner, play a game. There'll be the big Jenga will be out. I think we still have it here, right, Mike? Yes. 
So there'll be some games in Keeler Hall for us to play, some food, and just an opportunity to visit. So that'll be around the middle of each month on a Friday. I think I remembered everything, Lynn. Very exciting. All righty. Thanks, Rosemary. It all does sound very exciting. So hope uh, many of you can join in any of those activities we talked about. But now take a breath, sit back, relax, and enjoy this lovely prelude by Gordon Ritchie. It's a traditional Irish tune, he tells me. So I've said good morning. I want to say good morning to the people online. Thank you for being here, either in person or online or watching later on on YouTube. It's pretty exciting that we can have all these things going on. You know, we, the more things that are going on, the more volunteers we need. And that sort of feels like a good thing. So it's pretty exciting. A little overwhelming on the first day to kind of get hit up with all of that, but will be fine. As way of opening, I'd like to offer these words by Reverend Gretchen Haley, and she calls it the longing for something more. Every little thing that breaks your heart is welcome here. We'll make a space for it. Give it its due time and praise for the wanting it represents the longing for something more, some healing hope that remains not yet. We promise here no magic, no making it all better for you, but only offer this circle of trust, this human community that remembers, though imperfectly, that sings and contemplates, though sometimes very awkwardly. This gathering that loves, though not yet enough. We're still practicing after all, still learning, still in need of help, still in need of partners, still becoming able to receive all this beauty and all these first things that we bring. Let us be together this morning, opening our hearts and minds to the beauty that is here amongst all of us. I invite Lynn up to, for our chalice lighting.
Well, I will be claiming executive privilege or nepotism or whatever you want to call it and invite uh, John Turvey up to light our chalice this morning while I read these words written by our own Reverend Rosemary. Fire and water, earth and air, we bring all these elements together this morning to light our chalice. Water for cleansing and uniting, fire to keep us warm and light our way. Earth, the solid ground we walk on together. Air fills our lungs and brings us focus. May this flame be a beacon. May it shed light on what has been confusing us and may it beckon us forward into new imaginings. Thank you, John. So our opening hymn is hymn number 361, Enter, Rejoice and Come In. Please rise as you are willing and able, and you will see the words on the screen behind you, or you can find them in the gray hymnal if you desire. the pulpit and it felt weird kind of hiding from you all the time so we're trying a new thing we're gonna both sit over there so I kind of like it <laughs> and uh, we can cue each other as well and go oh no no that's not what's next <laughs> so the little um, video we're gonna watch a video for the children's story and so we'll be shutting off the recording. So if you're watching this later on in life, next week, the week after, or next year, the, there will be a, a link or a how to find the story if you want to read, watch it afterwards. So this is a story. Thank you. Thank you. That was very lovely. I find that this, these story times help me tune into my inner child, which is never a bad thing. Sharing our abundance is a wonderful tradition here at UCE, one that is very important for this self-supporting church and its many ministries. It encourages all who gather here to grow more generous in spirit and action. Those in the sanctuary can use envelopes found in the uh, Back the Gray hymnal if you so wish to receive a tax receipt. Many of our members and friends give monthly or annually through automatic withdrawal from their accounts. I would now ask uh, the ushers to take, uh, begin taking up the collection, John and Jennifer. Also, one half of the unidentified cash received on Sundays is given to an outside organization. For the month of September, we are supporting Camp Firefly, a leadership retreat for queer and trans youth ages 14 to 24. In a fun and social environment, campers develop skills that will positively impact their lives, homes, schools, and communities. Educational and art workshops, Indigenous programming, and a supportive team 
create space for emerging change makers to learn, explore their identity, and build resilience. You can also donate to Camp Firefly on their website. Now, let us join in singing from you I receive. Now, if we could please join in singing hymn number 100, I've got Peace Like a River. Peace Like a River, that song really enchants me. John and I are blessed to live above the North Saskatchewan River, not far from Ainsworth Dyer Pedestrian Bridge. I like to walk along the river most days and I, I miss it when I don't. What is it about rivers and lakes and oceans that act like a magnet to most of us? Of course, there's a trope about water being the elixir of life, every living being requiring enough of the stuff to thrive. We know the human body is made up of between 60 and 80 percent water depending on age and physiology. We came from the oceans, many scientists tell us, and so was pretty much everything else formed by water in one way or another. We have that in common with every living creature and indeed even those parts of our world that we don't consider alive. Mainly, maybe only because we haven't found a way to measure that life yet. But I digress. The point is, we all share that common bond forming the interconnected web of existence. For me, water not only feeds my physical body, but it nurtures my spirit through, the, through those powerful connections. A 20th century Indian guru has been quoted thus, 
Lie back in the river of consciousness and cease your struggles. That is my peace like a river. And UCE is a home that helps me live that. We're going to take a moment now to contemplate take some meditative time, a little bit of silence. I have a poem by David White called The Well that I will read as well through this um, time of meditation, contemplation, reflection, um, whatever word you would like to use. I'm just gonna take a drink of water. I invite you to put your feet on the floor if you like, plant them or not, wiggle around a little bit in your chair, get the zoomies out. It's been a while since we've been here together to share sacred and silent space. I invite you to focus in on your breath, that life-giving air that feeds our bodies oxygen and helps our minds sometimes to quiet. Sometimes our minds don't quiet and there are busy monkeys everywhere. I know that's certainly true for me. You can just follow your breath through your nose, into your lungs and your belly, and then feel it leaving you, taking from it what you need and letting go of all that you no longer require. The well. Be thankful now for having arrived, for the sense of having drunk from a well for remembering the long drought that preceded your arrival and the years walking in a desert landscape of surfaces, looking for a spring hidden from you so long that even wanting to find it now had gone from your mind until you only remembered the hard pilgrimage that brought you here, the thirst that caught in your throat the taste of a world just missed and the dry throat that came from a love you remembered but had never fully wanted for yourself. Until finally, after years of making the long trek to get here, was as if your whole achievement had become nothing but thirst itself. But the miracle had come simply from allowing yourself to know that you had found it that this time someone walking out into the clear air from far inside you had decided not to walk past it anymore. The miracle had come at the roadside, in the kneeling to drink, in the prayer you said, and the tears you shed, and the tears you shed and the memory you held, and the realization that in this silence, you no longer had to keep your eyes and ears averted from the place that could save you. That you had been given the strength to let go of the thirsty, dust-laden pilgrim self that brought you here, walking with bent back, bowed head, and careful explanations. No, the miracle had already happened when you stood up shook off the dust and walked along the road from the well out of the desert toward the mountain as if already home again, as if you deserved, as if you deserved what you loved all along, as you did. As if remembering the taste of that clear, cool spring could lift up your face and set you free. as if remembering the taste of that clear, cool spring could lift up your face and set you free.
And when you are ready, I invite you to drop a pebble in the water that's prepared for you right beside Robert in the neon green shirt. You can line up and take a pebble and drop it in the water, signifying or remembering or symbolizing some joy or concern, a trial or tribulation, an enthusiasm for life that you wish to acknowledge. If you are online, I invite you to write it in the, something in the chat if you have a joy or a concern that you'd like to share with us. You can do that um, if you so desire. I invite you forward now to drop pebbles of joy and concern. And if you're in line, please use the Buddha board And I now invite our service leader, Lynn Turvey, to drop one more pebble for all those joys and concerns that we hold in our hearts. And I apologize for not being clearer that there is one station, there was, I set up a station for pebbles of joy and concern and one station for water communion. Now, if I was a little smarter, I could have realized, I would have realized that both stations could have worked for both. And that would have gone a little quicker, but I'm not. <laughs> so this is what we got. 
homecoming, water communion. Well, it's official. I am now and have always been a water baby. Okay, what's going on? What am I doing wrong? Oh, I'm touching the cord in my pocket and I must stop. I'll start over. I am now and have always been a water baby. So strange because I was born in uh, and lived my formative years in landlocked Malfort, Saskatchewan. There is a river called the Carrot River nearby, but it's not much of a river. It happened the year between grade three and four. We spent the summer on the shores of Candle Lake, just north of Prince Albert, as my parents worked there that summer for the United Church camp. They were very, very busy. So I was largely undetected, undetected, which I really liked, and I was left to my own devices. I chose to spend most of my summer in the water. Big waves and swarms of fish flies could not deter me. I taught myself to paddle aimlessly and discovered the amazing joy of playing in the waves. This pastime has stayed with me. In fact, I was in Lake Michigan. The red light comes on, the red flag gets pushed, pulled up. The waves got bigger. The loudspeakers came on, everybody out of the water. And it's like, not me. I stayed in, but it was not smart. Earlier this summer, I was also playing in the waves in Kootenai Lake. It used to be a river, so there is still a bit of a current. So I got lost in the joy of it and then soon found myself, my son and his partner on the beach, and I was almost out of sight. My son yelled at me, hey, Ma, I think you need to come back. I make a swimming plan at the beginning of every summer. This summer, I decided I was going to swim in at least 12 different bodies of water. I got to 11. I got in up to my knees into the Pacific Ocean and chickened out. I was in Alaska, so it was cold. My symbolic water this year that will join with yours is from the Taya River, about 10 kilometers outside of Skagway, Alaska, in Dai. Dai was the original jumping off point of the Klondike Gold Rush, but was abandoned for White Pass Trail. When we camped there, the Taiyi River was full of spawning pink salmon. The thousands and thousands of dead and dying salmon brought with it more bald eagles and herons than I have ever seen before in one place. The bald eagles completely ignored us. They didn't care we were there. They didn't care how close we got to them. There were fish. I was in awe, completely humbled by the landscape. My breath was repeatedly taken away by the magnificence of the eagles and the herons and by the suffering and struggle of the salmon. Fall is a special time in the life cycle of the salmon, in the school year for students and staff alike, for the rhythm of our church year, and for many other rituals and celebrations in many denominations and world religions. Not only is it our water ritual today, but this week begins the start of High Holy Days. Rosh Hashanah is like the new year, and with it, instead of resolutions, we begin to think about what we may need to atone for. In the past year, have we done or said something we wish we hadn't? Yes. I don't think anyone here could say that they haven't. I certainly can't. Is there something we may need to make amends for? We'll be talking a bit more about this throughout the rest of the month. Rosh Hashanah is celebrated next weekend with Yom Kippur, the weekend afterward. Unitarians have deep Judaic roots, and it is important to note these special holidays in the Jewish calendar. But for today, we will start our own new year. We, as Unitarian Universalists, begin our church year with a water communion or celebration, whatever 
word works best for you, whatever word is comfortable for you. Please use that one. But how did this ritual start, I wonder? Well, I happen to know, and I'll tell you. In 1980, two Unitarian Universalist women, Carolyn McDade, who you probably know her name, she wrote Spirit of Life, hymn 123 in our, in our gray hymnal. Carolyn McDade and Lucille Shuck Longview were asked to create a worship service for the Women and Religion Continental Convocation of Unitarian Universalists. As they shaped that service, McDade and Longview wanted to create a new ritual that spoke to our interconnectedness to one another, to the totality of life and to our place in this planet, on this planet, end quote. They included a new inclusive symbol of women's spirituality, water, and they wrote, Water is more than simply a metaphor. It is elemental and primary, calling forth feelings of awe and reverence, acknowledging that the ocean is considered by many to be the place from which all life on our planet came. It is the womb of life, and that amniotic waters surround each of us prenatally. We now realize that this was for us a new story of creation. We chose water as our symbol of empowerment. End of quote. That was held in East Lansing, Michigan, and the service was called Coming Home Like Rivers to the Sea. As its creators, McDade and Longview enacted their ritual in the liberating space of a semicircle around a large earthenware bowl. They asked different women, eight different women, each coming from a distinct places to bring water, and they did. Water from the Rio Grande and from the Assiniboian rivers. Rain water from Maryland, water from the Pacific and Atlantic oceans and others were poured into this earthenware bowl as each bearer described its significance. As the ritual continued, says Carolyn McDade, water deepens in meaning for us, just as water deepens during its long and winding journey to the sea. And so we start this year with welcome, with the theme of welcome as our first Soul Matters theme. And here we are being welcomed into this day, this week, this month, this year. We are being welcomed to participate, to find new skills, to find new friends, to find what is longing in your own heart. And whether you brought water from someplace special, or the kitchen, or the bathroom sink, or if you're going to use water from that was provided here, you are welcome, you are wanted, your contribution is needed, and we need it to mix and mingle with everyone else's just like all of us, we are needed to mix and mingle in order to create community. But before we gather our water together, I'd like us to take a moment to reflect on welcoming. You can close your eyes if you like, or just find something to look at, or you can wander around, or you can draw on a pebble on, on, a, on a Buddha board. Imagine it's your first time at church, coming to this, to this sanctuary, this room, whatever you wish to call it. Perhaps it is actually your first time here today, or perhaps your first visit was many, many years ago. But just for a moment, imagine you were walking in for the first time. What did you see? Were you greeted? Were you welcomed into the space? And now imagine you were welcomed in just the way you would like. What would that actually look like, sound like, feel like? How do you think you can help create a welcoming spirit here at UCE? And now, when you are ready, bring your awareness back to this place and this time and open your eyes if you've had them closed. 
And rather than, all, I didn't, as you may notice, I didn't put a microphone down on the floor. But we need to talk about our water, where, where it came from, our symbolic water from a river, from an ocean, from, like I just did. I told you about how important the water is that my symbolic water, I will use water from the kitchen tap here. So I would invite you, if you are willing and able, always by invitation, never by demand, to form small groups of two or three, just with the person beside you or behind you. If you want to talk to someone that's not your usual partner that you're sitting with, um, to tell each other where your special water is. It could be your water of your childhood that brought, makes you feel alive. It could be water that you visited this summer. It could be the North Saskatchewan River that you walked upon this year. So I invite you to kind of change your chairs around a little bit. Just talk to the person next to you in small groups of two or three. You've just got a couple of minutes each to talk about water that is special to you. And if you're online, you'll be unmuted and allowed to talk. We not only mix and make this congregation, creating something together that we could never do on our own. I invite you to come now to either station because I got smarter. And if you're online, I invite you to put something in the chat about the water you're thinking about or have shared something about. I invite you now. This water is sacred water. It is water consecrate, uh, consen, consecrated by our stories, our tears, and our commitment to becoming a welcoming and beloved community. Water saved from last year was used to seed the water, and I will save some of this water for child dedications and blessings, the animal blessing this year any other blessings as well. I'll probably save, use it during my installation as well. We bless this water and our community with love. May we always know that no matter how hard life gets sometimes, that we are not alone. May it be so. I invite you to sing our closing hymn, Blue Boat Home, everyone's favorite. 
a little water. There was a bit of a water theme this morning. <laughs> Please rise in body or spirit as if as you would like. I now ask John to come forward and extinguish our chalice while I read these words by Becky Laurent. As flame is to spirit, so spirit is to breath and breath to song. Though we extinguish the flame in this sanctuary, may we tend it in our hearts until we meet again. And now I offer you these words of benediction. Do not be dismayed by the brokenness of the world. Things can break and things can be mended, but not with time, as they say, with intention. So go, leave this place and love intentionally. Love unconditionally and above all else, love extravagantly. For the broken world waits in darkness for the light and the love that, was, that is within you. Go in peace, gentle people. Go in peace. And now I invite you to form a haphazard, windy, kind of funny circle. And we will, you don't have to hold hands. Don't make, let anybody make you hold hands. And we'll sing Carry the Flame, our linking song.